Hey everybody, welcome back to BigBikeBMX.com. I'm super, super psyched. It's interview time, and uh, it's during the, during this uh, the coronavirus, so there's not a whole lot we can do. And we we got lucky uh, today. I've got Craig, eighty BMX Craig, over here in the blue. What's up? And uh, we we he and I had an interview a couple of episodes ago, so go check that out. And uh, we were just chatting, and then we uh, we ran into. Mr. Matt Rickard over here in the corrosive jersey from SE Bikes, and uh, he was gracious enough to uh, to come on. and And uh, I would I would not want anybody else to to do this interview uh, with me other than Craig. So he was gracious enough to uh, set aside some time. So we're all lucky that we get both these gentlemen here, and uh, we're going to focus on Matt today. Matt, how's it going, man? It's going good, guys. Thank you. You know, I saw you guys had your little interview together, and. I- I was like, God damn it, I need to be a part of that. That's, they're talking, they're speaking my language. And when I was watching that is what I, I learned this like immediately that there's a large generation gap between like the modern day movement. Most of these kids are 20 years and under, maybe they bleed up into their 20s, but there's a huge generation gap. And uh, it was really good to hear from people that, it sounded more relatable for me because your guys are more my age. Um, it was, it, um, I love what the kids are doing. I love their energy. You know, that's what keeps me out there. But what I'm finding is there's more guys that are our age that are out here riding. And, um, dude, we've all lived these lives and we have all these, we have our own shit going on and we meet other people on these bicycles, these, yep. you know, these bicycles that we ride. And, uh, there's people everywhere that just have normal lives and that ride bikes, and it brings us all together. A lot of the kids, their parents buy them a bike, and then their parent has a bike. And that's how we get to meet a lot of the older guys because they got a kid that won't stay off their damn bike, and so they drag dad into the bike life scene. And um, that's great to see that because it's uh, the bonds that you build when you're riding bikes, it, it's it's irreplaceable. A hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. I mean, just just – the, the the bond that that I had with Craig almost instantly after watching him on your uh, on your the the podcast that you co-host over at Urban Misfits Podcast, I was like, man, I got it. I, I I started stalking Craig right away. I was like, man, this is my guy. You know, I was like, man, I I, I used to beg my mom to go to the grocery store so I could look at magazines too. And uh, dude, it was instantaneous. I'm telling you, like every every like memory I had, he had something so similar, and and it was just such a magical thing. And you're 100 percent right. You know, I think you get parents buying their kids bikes. This is how I got back into it. Bought my kid a bike. I wanted to ride something that wasn't a beach cruiser or a mountain bike. And here I am, back on my bike, riding wheelies, having more fun than I've ever had in my life. And be and, and just realizing that BMX hasn't left me. I'm not an orphan in BMX. Like Todd and and SE and the other bike manufacturers, they've made these bikes available that people like like us can actually still ride the bikes we want have the fun we want and do it with our kids and our family you know se bikes makes i think they got somewhere around 19 different models so if you're not a really guy look into the going to their website look at what they got going on they got something for everybody um all the bikes are price point bikes there's nothing that's super over the top um most people modify these bikes they want to people like us with disposable income we want to we want profile cranks you know, I want hookworms. We want certain things on these bikes, and now we can afford it. Um, when I got sponsored by Todd, I asked him, do I got to leave the bike stock? He said, no, do whatever you want to it. Whatever it takes to keep me riding and riding at a high level, you know, thank them. I Thank you, Todd, for the for the bike. Thank you, SE Bikes, for the sponsorship. And then I was able to put my own flavor and everything onto it. That bike right now. I just put a wheel set on it, you know, I, sp- I Basset Hubs, M80 Hoops, um, <laughs> brand, brand new Hookworms, it's, I let Jack ride it last week, and my blue bike's running real good, and I don't want to get off that thing yet. <laughs> no doubt, dude. The red Man. bike's just sitting waiting for me, so. I, dude, I gotta ask, like, I know, I know there's some questions I, I've got, but talking about SC Bikes... One of the most popular questions that I get on my channel is, "Hey Isaac, I am six foot, and then insert any number after that. Which SE bike should I get?" And here I'm looking at you, and you are a giant 
just sitting there on the screen. Like there's, we were setting this up. We couldn't find a like a telescope, like a a, a tripod or anything like that that's tall enough. Hello. How tall are you? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm six five and I'm I'm about two hundred ten pounds right now. So I'm not I'm not necessarily heavy, but I'm a I'm a bigger guy. My weight's pretty spread out on the bike. You know I'm. It, it's up there. I'm I'm up and back. My weight's not necessarily on the bike. Uh, for the taller guys, you know, especially the guys that come from a mountain bike, you know, they can't really picture a BMX. The OM Duro is perfect for that. It's it's a BMX, but it's not. When you sit on it and you're thinking about a mountain bike, it looks like a mountain bike. If you want to go jump something, you can. Um, that's a 27.5, and you know, most mountain bikes nowadays are 27.5, 29. The 26-inch bikes are they're they're a thing of the past. It's um, they're just obsolete now. So you know the Beast Mode's a good bike. You know over six foot tall, you're gonna want to be on a big ripper. And then I'm six five, so I got like I got 15 mil and spacers under my stem. Then I have nine inch bars. I run my seat up pretty far, but it you know it feels like the bike I rode when I was a kid. You know I don't. I don't feel 6'5 and this big guy on this bike. When I'm out riding by myself, I feel like a normal dude on my BMX bike. It fits me good. I have no problem riding 20 miles, you know, at a, a shot. Friday night, we got 20 miles here locally in Sacramento. And uh, the bike runs great every time. That's yeah, great. just to put it in perspective, too, I'm about 5'10 and a half, 5'11. Um, I've got a, a variance of different bikes. I run, I've got that... Uh, uh, Maniacs Flyer, which is kind of basically on a beast mode platform, um, and that's a 27.5 or, or something like that. And I also ride the Big Rippers, which are 29 inch. Um, I'm a little heavier. I'm I'm the same weight as Matt, but I'm squatted down a little bit more. But you know those those bikes are super comfortable, easy to ride. And I even see you know like younger guys out there, or I should say shorter guys, uh, basically like teenagers riding the the Rippers and doing just fine now. They ride it for the wheelies. They got their seats plastic, you know, planted all, right down on the frame. All the way down like exact, this. Yeah. Seat tip forward because when they get that bike up for comfort, they want to be able to have that seat kind of on the same perpendicular plane as the as the street, right? But, yeah, it, it really is a BMX frame yeah. all the way down on the rippers. And, and with that being said, you know, a guy like Matt, 6'5", guy like me, 5'11", it's a really comfortable ride. Yeah, and so what's your which is your favorite bike to ride, Craig? Like when you, if you're just going to go out cruise around, what's your cruise around bike? My go-to is my Ripper. Um, okay. You know, I have a couple big Rippers, um, Dogtown. I got the Arctic White, but um, you know, it, it just depends on what I want to ride um, as far as what I want to do that day. The the Maniac Flyer I gave to my lady; she likes it a little bit more. But I had a lot of fun on that. Um, I like the smaller frame a little bit sometimes if I really want to go out there and whip it around or, you know, ride a little bit more uh, where I'm going off jumps or, or whatever. But the Ripper is really my go-to. Got it. So that's, that's a great, that's a great answer um, and very helpful because that's something that, especially guys like me getting back into it, you hear 29 and you're like, there's no way it's going to be comfortable. And then you get out and ride it and you're like, this feels like home. It, it literally does the geometry, yeah, I- the geometry on them. Like it makes it, I did a video on this a couple days ago, but, you know, with, with the shorter the shorter rear end and the, the straight seat post, it puts the seat exactly where it was when we were kids, and we'd run those twenty inch bikes with a way laid back seat post. So we were just fixing the geometry to make them more comfortable. And and all they've done now with these these stock bikes is like, oh, I can just do that for you, so you don't have to buy all these extra parts to make it comfortable. Yeah, I mean, another thing you can do is if you go out on a ride out and you've got your eye on a bike or you've been scoping one out online, ask someone if you could ride their bike. If you see it, if you see the one you want to hop on, yeah. I, I haven't seen many people not let you ride their their bike if you ask. You know, here, hold mine, I'll ride yours, whatever. So you can kind of yeah. get a feel for it, you know, so. I've never been on a ride out. I'm kind of intimidated to go to a ride out. Because oh. I don't necessarily know everybody in person, and it looks like there's just a lot of craziness. Is that is what's a ride out like? And I'll, I'll start with you, Matt, and then Craig. Craig, jump in. Uh, you know, when when you when you're ready. But Matt, what what's a ride out to you? What is what, what, who's the ride out for? Who should go out to these? Okay, first of all, go to your local bike shop, test ride a bike. 
once you once you test ride these bikes, you'll fall in love with one of them. With me, it's the it's the twenty nine er. It 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 made me feel like when I was the little kid in the neighborhood and the big kid had a big bike. And remember when you take off on his bike and you got it and you're like, oh, I could just take off and keep going. And you bring him right. his bike back, but it's that feeling of, oh my god, I'm riding the big kid's bike again. You're on the big bike, so you already feel like this kid again. And then you go out with all these other people that have the same the same experience, and we ride together. And it creates this energy, man, that it, it's it's undeniable that everybody there is ha genuinely having a good time. They genuinely want to be there, and they're, they're committed to exercising their body. You know, they're feeding their mind and their spirit at the same time while they're out just riding, enjoying – it's like when you're driving in a car, you only see so much. When you're on a bike, you see the details. You slow down a little bit more. You talk to the guy you're riding next to, and you get to meet people and know people. And um, you find people with the same kind of energies, and you gravitate towards them. Um, the rideouts are a great place for that, man. It. Uh, I don't think there's ever been any negative experiences on the rideouts. You know, in other towns, there's been little scuffles and stuff, but it's – Kids are going to have those problems. Usually, how should someone know which which ride out to go to, Matt? I mean, how do you find out about these things, and which which one should someone you know latch onto, and how do they get involved with it? You know, you um, you just drive, ride your bike around locally and try to hopefully you bump into people. Or like I was in Tahoe when I ran into the sixty sixty one BMX group from Sacramento. I was in Tahoe doing something totally. I was on a date something totally not bicycle related. I had bikes at home, but I bumped into these guys and I saw the ride out. And um, yeah, you just have to network and find out who's riding and just keep bugging people. Like I run the North Sac BMX page. I got people that come out and ride just that ride. I never see them in any other rides, but when I have a North Sac BMX ride, they come out. So you network like at one ride and then you say, Hey, Somebody want to ride next Saturday because most rides are like monthly. And uh, that's what happened with North Sac BMX. We just started riding weekly. We had enough people that run, wanted to ride frequently enough that uh, we put together our own group. And then once you start riding and it's a word of mouth attraction, that's the this is one of the beautiful things is social media really lets you kind of blanket and saturate if you want. But from my perspective, it's really a way to know that guy's phone number without having to know his phone number. So you don't have to just pump it up their ass. You can kind of just put it out there like, yo, this is what I've been doing. If you want to participate, come join. And um, it's really like for me, it's an attraction of, rather than promotion where I want people to see me having fun and then they want to come have fun too. Um, if people don't, I'm still going to go out and have fun at the rides. And for people new – just reach out, you know, they see, they obviously have a bike for a reason and they have, they have an idea of who they want to be around and whatnot. And believe me, the people like myself that go to regular ride outs, if someone hits me up and says, what's good, what's good for the weekend? I'm pretty much going to go to a flyer on somebody's page and tag them to get them in the network loop so that they're in. Now, even if they don't make it to that one, they still have a reference point and they can make it back there. In a month, they might check, and there's a meeting, and they're like, you know, there's a ride. And they're like, dude, I hit you up a month ago, and I didn't catch up till now. I, I get that a lot to where I'm really committed to this, and I ride every weekend. So I see people that they have relationships, they have lives, they have children. They don't get to get out every weekend. I'm lucky. I have grown kids, uh, 44 years old. My kids are 23 and 26. I can get out every single weekend. I can travel every weekend. Um, and I just like to get out. And, you know, when you see the people that you only see once a month, you it, it means more to you because you know that that's their only chance to get out and ride. So, you know, I'm going to go over there and ride a wheelie next to them and talk to them and chop it up and try to make their experience, you know, try to add quality to it so that, you know, in a month when they get time, they can come out and ride again. Exactly. Great. Craig, how do you, what's how do you pick? Like, what's where do you go for right, your your ride out information? You know, uh, the way I started was um, just on social media, like Matt was saying, um, just just checking out riders, um, and then saw, started seeing the announcements for local rides, 
And the one closest to me was the Stockton Port City Wheelie Crew um, weekly ride out. So that's like a local um, uh, ride for me. And I, and I just kind of went out there. I just, you know, loaded the bikes in the truck and went out and, and just kind of mixed in with the crowd. Um, got to, uh, to meet guys like Matt and Damon and B day one and, and just folks, you know, just go up and saying, what's up, you know, just making yeah. yourself known or at least, you know, trying to, to, to network or just, you know, say hi. Um, and then the way I've really first got started was the Santa Cruz ride out. Um, and Tom Laughlin was putting that on. Um, and big shout out to him because that is an amazing ride. And so that was just getting myself immersed initially into the scene. And then like Matt also said, you just network, you just talk to people. So you're talking when you, when you ride, you're talking when you stop at the break spots and, and then you kind of get a feel for where things are at, who's doing what, where they're doing it at. And then it just becomes one of those things that you start planning and um, getting involved with. Yeah. I, I, I'll share my experience. Like I haven't been on a, a big ride out. Um, but after I bought my bike, uh, I had gone to the shop to, cause I don't have a free will tool. Um, and we did like, you guys just did an episode on urban Mrs. podcast, uh, how to change free will. I didn't have a free will tool. So I went down to my local bike shop and was asking them, Hey man, can you guys just put this free, this new free will on? Cause I wanted a lighter gear for my bike while I'm in there. This dude comes in, uh, and he had an OM and, uh, an OM Duro. And, uh, I, I mean, instantly it's, it's, it's like I was 12 years old again. And, and some kid comes into the local bike shop with a trick star. You're like, dude, you you like you're you're my people, right? So, um, it was it was this guy uh, Jason for BM, uh, it's BMX Rad Rides, and uh, he gives me a sticker. I was like, dude, let me. Uh, do you have Instagram? He's like, yeah, we followed each other on Instagram. Um, gave gave a pound. That was it. I'm just I'm thinking I'm following this guy. A week later, I get tagged on an Instagram story, which had never happened in my life. And uh, he's just like, you know, there's a ride out in Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, I was like babe, I'm going to this thing. And so exactly what you just described was my experience. I got tagged on something through this, to the BMX network on Instagram. And now every weekend and, and Matt, I'm your, I'm your, the person you're talking about. I've got two kids that are 12 and I've got a seven year old, so I can't get out every weekend, but just being able to, to know that there's a ride and I just keep getting constantly tagged because they know like, Hey, there's another person I can ride with. And, and it's the feeling that I, I had when I went, I didn't know anybody. It's like your first day of high school. Like you show up and you're like, oh, there's all these cool kids and all these big bikes. Here comes the new kid. <laughs> and and I, I'm, I'm waiting at the park uh, where we're meeting because I'm old and I show up early because that's what old people do, right? And so I make hanging out at this park and I'm like, I don't even know if this is the right park. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> out of nowhere, I just see this mob. And I'm like, that's, there it is. So I ride over. And, uh, you know, everyone kind of looks like, who's this guy? And it's, you know, I'm just like, hey, guys, I'm the new guy. And instantly it was like, what's up, man? Slapping fives, pounds. Everyone wants to talk about my bike. They wanted to share their experiences on their bikes. And, dude, it was like I literally felt like the exact same feeling I had when I was a kid just riding around with them that I had when I was 12. And you're just riding down the street and you're just talking about, you know, yeah, I'm like, I got this. They're like, what kind of free will is that? You know, and it's just the same experiences. So. If you're if you're thinking about going to a ride out, absolutely, I would say go and absolutely go do it and and start local. Hit up your local shops and, and get that information. Post up something on Instagram and you'll probably get tagged almost instantly for the next weekend's ride. So, absolutely, get out there and do that stuff. Yeah, I uh, you know I rode like so I met the I met the sixty sixty one crew in Tahoe and I went to a, a few rides, maybe only one of their monthly rides, and then. The Santa Cruz ride in 2017 happened, and I started to get the vision of what was really going on. I drove down there the night before and slept in my truck, so I didn't miss it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I was going to break down. I was going to break Wouldn't down on the way there. The party. And, make, dude. <laughs> and uh, You know, I got there to the parking lot. It, it's like 8 in the morning. I wake up. Somebody pulls in. So one person in the parking lot, and it's uh, Donnie Warsome. It's it's Tom's family, and I had been on Instagram. I just figured out who D Blocks was, and I saw that they were some at someone's house. And Donnie goes, 
So I go, you going right or what? He goes, yeah, let's go over here to uh, Tommy's house. I got a buddy's house over here. All the boys are over there. I didn't, I didn't know what it meant. So I just met him, and I was brave enough to reach out and say, hey, he had the same uh, ripper as me. He had the same bike, so, you know, instant, instant bromance, right? And um, <laughs> rode to Tommy's house, and I didn't really, I mean, I knew how famous D-Blocks was, and I met all the Cycle Squad maniacs. These, there was a bunch of local kids there. They needed tools. I was able to hand them tools. I was able to jump right in, you know, help them with their flats, just get in and get everybody running again. And um, <clears throat> I literally was able to walk into this major mainstream scene with D-Blocks and Twisted 700, Mo Blocks, Art BMX. All these guys are right there in front of me. And, uh, you know, I'm trying not to freak out. I'm trying not to freak out. I'm, I'm helping <laughs> the local kids. And I don't know anybody. And by the end of that night, you know, um, it, w it was amazing. I met Damon that day. I met Rosie that day. Um, after that ride, I probably rode Stockton every weekend for six months. Um, while I was there, I got to meet Todd Lyons. Um, you know, first impressions on all these people. I was a noob. And, um, you know, I just made friends with everybody and, and just wanted to be one a part of. And uh, that's always how it is in this bike life is everybody feels like you're a part of. Yeah, um, yeah. that's a good point because I just started doing like Isaac, you asked about me right now, um, like two years ago. Um, I think I went to the 2008 whenever I met you, Matt, um, at that Santa Cruz ride out. And especially the local ones, like like I said, I ride Stockton, but it's like immediately you're packed in, you know, you're you're. Yeah, you can be off into the shadows and not talk to anyone, but that's what fun is that, right? So you start saying what's up or people go, hey, man, who are you? And then it's like you're already you're riding with them and you're hanging out. So you're already instantly packed up. And, and everyone that I've ran into makes you definitely made me feel welcomed. Um, Want to know about the bikes? Where are you from? You know, it's just your first ride. I mean, they're not, they're not trying to see if you're going to be a part of their crew. They're just like, welcome have fun today, you know, they just want to know who you are. And, you know, if yeah. anyone's got any skepticism over whether they should or shouldn't go do it, get out there. You got the bike, you're, or you, you may be curious which one you get, but go out on what you got mm -hmm. and join the pack. You know, yeah. there's no other way to do it yet. I mean, if you want to watch it online, you, well, I don't know about that, but get your bike in the back of your vehicle and go join up with any crew you can, any, any drive bike. To drive to stock and go they're waiting for anybody that wants to ride. yeah i mean i and then I, isaac i don't i mean out in arizona you guys might not have the availability or there might not be enough local rides but you can start your own i mean we got a one of our buddies up in reno he's kind of solo rider uh but he's going to be hopefully be you know starting and that's joey uh reno pedal blocks yeah he's going to get his bike right out going soon too so start the movement you know if you don't have one in your yeah. area kickstart it get out there if, and ride get if you build it go. yeah if you build it they will come right yeah yeah that's what i'm getting at so yeah i i agree i agree yeah definitely um so just to rewind the clock a little bit matt we're talking about what's going on today but you know i think people would really like to hear um you know kind of how you got started or what era um you were in when when you got into the bike uh the mx scene <laughs> there he is uh well you know I'm, I'm 44 years old and i've had bikes in my life m most of my life you know um my parents my dad always kept me on a bike always kept me riding um f first memory five years old looping out off of on a wheelie losing my little fingernail um Always were on mountain bikes. I was a skater as a kid. Uh, a kid in the neighborhood had a 12-foot half pipe with two feet of vert. And uh, I spent 13, 14, 15 riding skateboards, launch ramps. And then, um, you know, after I turned 18, I got a job and I started having my own bikes. And um, I also had a kid at 18. So I had a good reason to have an extra bike around. And, you know, I, my son was born when I was 22 so by the time I was like 25 26 27 I had him we were racing the local bike tracks uh Brian Ford a guy I grew up with he runs the local bike track here in Roland at Elkhorn BMX um I think it's track California-11 
but he runs the track and all of us that grew up together you know we do whatever we could to get each other's kids out on the track and brian you know he would loan us parts uh find out who's selling a bike for cheap chip in on the bikes he kept us on the track so from my son's age five to 13 we're at the track three four nights a week traveling racing and um around 13 his uh he, he he wasn't as big as the other kids and he wasn't having fun because the kids were like goddamn six foot tall at 13 and he wasn't as big so um slowly we slowed down on the racing scene and he just started uh dirt jumping so i always had my mountain bikes my full suspensions and i had a, i've had a se dirt jumper for the last 10 years and um yeah, so through him dirt jumping, I, I buy him a dirt jumper, you know, and this Verde Lux, he just had to have it. It had these Odyssey Twombolt cranks, and it was like 800 bucks. And I had a really good job at the time, and I had some money, and, uh, you know, kid wants what he wants, and I, I got him that Verde. But on the way out, I look over, and there's this dirt jumper, and it's a SE, and I look at it, and I instantly, when I was growing up, there was an SE in the in the neighborhood bike shop hanging on the wall, you know, no one could ever buy it, but it was in there. So I always had this picture that that's what the bike looks like. And, um, it had the SE bubble on the dirt jumper. I leave with his bike. I go to work the next day. The boss is like, I won't shut up about the bike. I'm telling everybody I see everybody I talk to. And he's like, dude, just go buy the bike. I know you got the money. <laughs> so I, I left work at lunch. And I'm scared that they're going to sell the damn thing. So I drive there. I buy it. I think I paid 400 bucks for it. And it ends up being a SE. It's called the X4 Flyer. There's a type of racing called Four Cross where four guys go down the mountain like snowboarders. And uh, it's really dangerous and uh, not very not very popular here. They still do it's it in It's like a small one bike, right? Yeah. And basically, the guys get the shit beat out of them all the way down the mountain. And uh, <laughs> But it's great. It's a great dirt jumper. And... Uh, it was my go-to bike for like 10 years. And then, you know, I rode 20 inch for a long time with the kids. But then as I got older, they liked to ride with their friends. So I was able to suit my needs and just have a, you know, I had a full suspension mountain bike for a long time. I had that dirt jumper. And uh, bicycles were just always a part of the family. You know, we always, I live in the middle of nowhere, kind of, and we could ride where there's no cars. Um my son was on the track all the time, and <laughs> there's these rules. Dad's not allowed on the track because every time Dad gets on the track, he eats shit. <laughs> so real simple, Dad, you're fucking up my fun. Stay off the track. <laughs> so, you know, we're at, the, we're at the track a lot. So basically, what he happened? just needed a ride there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy till we get there, Dad, and then sit there and wait. Because I would try to go down the gate – or I would do something that's beyond my abilities, and I'd get fucking hurt. And I, you know, let's go. We got to leave. And uh, so that, I always rode wheelies on the mountain bikes and stuff when I was younger, and I did on the dirt jumper. So when I would ride the, the bikes with the kids on the street, we're not at the track. That stupid ass rule <laughs> doesn't apply. <laughs> you know, dad can do whatever he wants. So I would just ride wheelies, and he was small, and he would always say, you're going to get hurt. And, and I'm like, dude, this is, this is all I got. Don't don't take this from me. The wheelies, this is all I got. And I would, you know, I've been riding wheelies for a long time. The turning and stuff, it, it that's new. Um, I've been able to really apply that on the bigger BMX now. Um, I, I have video on the 26, the dirt jumper, and I'm just not quite turning and not as good as I can on the 29. And so, yeah. yeah, so so you were doing wheelies before it was even like a thing in the in like the bike life movement. I mean, you were just that was your thing, right? Because yeah, because there was some household rules that I wasn't allowed on the track. <laughs> no, I, we That's always rode wheelies, and, and you know there was as a kid, there's levels of r people who ride. Every okay, so first of all, you got to have <clears throat> name brand bike. You got to have something in there that's kind of you know it's kind of high performance, right? So once you achieve that, now what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be a poser? Are you going to, you know, are you going to let the big kids jump your bike? Or are you going to run it through its paces? And I want to segue into something here, Matt, and, and speaking of role models, so influences like the kids riding out there today, even the adults, myself included, 
we'll look at you, your writing style, your your work ethic, your drive, your grind, whatever you want to call it, right? And we, I want to know what yours is so I can emulate that, so I can try to weave that into my my um, my work ethic and things like that because I see what results can come from it because I watch guys like you. But going back, you know, obviously I'm an 80s fanatic. I'm a nut. I love the old school bike scene because those were just really good times for me. And a lot of my childhood memories were just so friggin' rad when it comes to the bike world, you know, with, with this old school stuff. But what influences, I mean, what did you, you kind of were in the mid school uh, range when you, you got started with bikes, it sounds like. Did you have anybody that, that you were looking up to or was, or was there anyone locally or professionally that you tried to emulate or wanted to be like um, that kind of shaped your writing style? You know, the, oh man, oh, I, I may absorb some time explaining this one. Ever since I, I live in a small town called Rillinda, California, and, and there's not a, I'm not going to say we're below the poverty line, but there's a lot of opportunities to fucking ruin your life out here. You know, there's there's avenues, and so from a young age, there was there's people that I knew grew up in bad households. Um, the O Street Jumps that I that I man, there was this kid Boogie Wagner, hardest kid, hardest working kid at the jumps, the best jumping kid. It, it turns into these uh, these work ethics. You know, you see these people, and you know how hard they work and what they put into it, and so you know what is necessary. Um, even if you don't be able to, if you don't see it and identify it immediately, you see that because at some point in your life, for me personally, I'm a recovering, recovering methamphetamine addict. And I had, you know, I had to figure this shit out on my own. I found myself in jail at 28 years old and had to start all over at 30. I got in the trade. Um, I moved away from the playground. I surrounded with myself with a new peer group. I went to meetings for two years, three to four meetings a week, um, I changed my peer group to similar people with similar goals and similar interests. Um, and what I learned is you have, for me, the way I translate it, the simplest way is for me, it's life or death. If I don't stay on this grind and keep moving forward and keep progressing um, for as a person in my daily life, if I backslide a little bit, I might backslide a little bit more and it might not be able to recover from it so i have to stay i was very assertive and aggressive in my recovery you know i chased it i participated in the 12-step programs i did all of that stuff and i was able to apply those principles to my life and it was structure Congratulations. And structure it bleeds off into the rest of your life you know if you want to accomplish something you set small goals right you set small goals that lead into big goals Big goals lead into fucking dreams, dude. Straight up. You you know, you want to get sponsored? It's a small goal. You know, you, it, it's a small goal for right now. So you make little steps. You post twice a week. You hashtag people. You make your content consistent, and you try to improve the quality of it every time. And, uh, yeah, you just keep building momentum that way. And then your small goal is accomplished, those two posts a week. Now those are building into a bigger goal of trying to be seen. And it just, you know, and then you're posting on your story. You find people that like what you have going on. They repost your stuff. Um, the list goes on and on. Santos is the best to watch if you want to see how somebody moves on the Internet and want to know how to get seen and to stay in front of everybody. Santos, he posts like once an hour on his story probably. So no matter when you open your phone, something from him is going to be new. And it's always about the Brooke Boys and about Santos's brand. He's, you know, he's got that little dagger. He's, he's that little thing. It represents something way bigger than any of us even realize right now. And uh, his wheels are turning constantly. Um, if he's not out riding his bike, he's making moves on Instagram. He's networking with people. He's DMing people. He's, uh, he's liking and commenting on other people's stuff. He's building himself. Uh, like basically a virtual empire on the internet. Everybody knows who he is. Um, well, let's boys. talk about let's talk about broke boys, and let's talk about your involvement with it. 
and tell us a little bit more about what you're doing with the team and maybe <laughs> some of the maybe <laughs> wait hang on there we go when, yeah so a wardrobe change the wardrobe yeah i like so, it yeah so let us yeah. know what's going on with broke boys what is it what, what are you doing with it and, and what's what are what are they putting out right now that we should be looking out for so one of the one of the things the riders are doing right now on the internet, especially here on the West Coast, we're reaching across the country to the East Coast, but what we're doing is there's a lot of quality riders out here, and the Broke Boys team has assembled 10 of them. But aside from them, those 10 people, there's other people. I think we added Ricky and Kyle. So there's a dozen now. But we're hyping everybody up. Someone does something badass, something BMX-related. I'm mid-school. If somebody's doing... Dude, those half cab things or whatever that Ricky does when he spins, um, Isaac, any kind of manuals, any kind of body positioning on the bike, it um, it needs to be rewarded with at least attention. You know, you tag the guy, you say, "Look, this guy just he fucking jumped this." You know, yeah, um, yeah. it's an all star cast too. I mean, you talked yeah. about the dozen guys you got. You guys are really bringing each of you like your own style your own writing um, um yeah yeah, style, they, yeah big couple eo blocks they just both got picked up by throne they're 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 riding thrones now uh you got jacob you got odz um dallas you got dz bike life you got d whips you My got tucker you got tucker you got slim boy you got myself and you got Got Bars. That's that's the ten. Got Bars. He's he's he is broke boys. So those are our ten guys. And uh, you know, they sent us all these shirts. We're putting this product on blast. And um, what it's really turning into is this is turning into a brand. There's a, in the cannabis industry in California. There's already a brand called it's the Broke Boys. They're they're big in Oakland. Uh, Terp. Got bars, got bars 510. Follow him. He's a clout chasing son of a bitch. If you don't follow him, you're a sissy la la and you don't give a shit about nothing. But yeah, <clears throat> these guys are all about promoting each other. Um, the Broke Boys guys have loaned money to the Broke Boys BMX team to bring parts out. And I think there's a van in the works. We're going to do a tour at some point. But we came out with handlebars. The handlebars took off like wildfire. Those things. There's four-piece bars in the works. There's a set of forks in the works, and I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. I saw a sketch drawing. I want my signature part to be a stem, and the Profile Gen 1 stem is one of my favorite stems. I want something similar to that, but I saw a rough sketch of it, and, um, dude, this is super exciting that, that we're going to have a full line. Within a year, Broke Boys BMX will have a full line of products that you'll be able to purchase your bike from. Click it, ship it, rip it from SE Bikes, or if you go City Grounds or whatever you do at your local bike shop, you can go buy your Bone Stock SE Throne GT Redline, whatever fucking bike you want. But what we want is for you to get that bike and go to our shop online and buy all of our parts and dress your bikes out and then do badass stuff on it. We want to see wheelies, we want to see grinds. You know, Santos is into huge airs, grinds and spin tricks and dude just like with these bars coming out they're not coming out of an engineering manufacturing uh this looks good on some autocad what are you guys doing with these bars how are they are you guys testing these out in the field because i know they were ridden hard before their one bar was even sold and these bars are made up in oregon just you know a few hundred miles north of where we're at in california and uh the guy makes motorcycle bars so when you look at these bars, if you look in the bar ends, regular bar ends don't fit the little plugs. They don't yeah. fit. The wall of the tubing is super thick, and it may add weight or, or whatever, but when I look in there and see that, I see a quality product. It takes – it's harder to get those bars bent the way they're supposed to be when it's thicker tubing. It's going to want to roll. And I, I bend conduit for a living, so I know that having thicker wall – conduit or tubing is it's uh it's gonna last longer and then you look at the welds and then you see the shit jacob has done to these things um i don't run it myself but i have a, a bike built up i took the brakes off i got broke boys bars on there i got some issues with the forks but when that thing's ready 
it's going to go the track. My son's going to jump it, and uh, he'll be my test dummy on those things over here. He's a, uh, you know, all that dirt jump when he was a kid. He want he he jumped this thing and he wanted the brakes off so he can do some tuck no handers, and uh, yeah, these kids, you know, we got. There's some wonderful young kids in Sacramento that I, you know, I'm I'm blessed to be able to ride with, and they're uh, they're jumping their bikes, they're riding wheelies. I wish I could assemble a crew up here in Northern California because uh, the kid that got interviewed on the podcast, Carlos, big shout out Urban Misfit Podcast, Carlos, he's getting a uh, Todd sending him a uh, Gaudium. This kid's doing backflips, he's doing tail whips, he's doing all kinds of stuff on a 20 inch, and um, even us in the big BMX bike life scene, we want to reward this kid. He he works his tail off on all bikes. And, uh, no, he's rad. I, I, I first saw him in Tahoe ride, and he was doing the same thing on a little pump track. He was, you know, back flipping and tail whipping. And, I mean, yeah, he's he's pretty dope. So I'm, I'm glad to see him get some, get some recognition out of that. And and just going back to what we were saying, like, Isaac, you, you have the broke boy bars, right? I do. And I know I, you do, so it's like I do, yeah. Bars, dude. That, I mean, like Matt was saying, dude. I'm gonna be honest. This is gonna sound like a, a broke boys ad, um, and I, I can tell you, like, I, I'm not. I don't get anything free. I bought my bars, <laughs> but here's my thing. Like, I, I I bought my bike. I felt like I liked the BMX style bars. I wanted higher bars, and and uh, just kind of to your point, Matt. Like talking about Santos, like he he was one of the first people that I ended up following. And, uh, you know, I saw him talking about, I'm testing these bars. Um, I saw him on, on your podcast, on the Urban Misfits podcast. And uh, it, it kind of blew my mind. I'm like, this guy, like, you know, I'm looking at how I ride. I ride wheelies and I ride my bike to work. And I do little little wall rides and jumps. Not a whole lot of damage can happen to a handlebar with at my age with what I'm doing. But here I see a picture of Jacob, you know, jumping a, a street barricade on a loading dock. And I, I see this picture, I'm like, that's pretty high. And then he shows another picture, and I'm like, that dude is like eight feet in the air on his 29er. And he's I like telling that. me. Dude, I jumped, like, and I got about five feet of air, which uh, was a lot. But when I saw that picture, because I wasn't there the same day, dude. Yeah. Crazy. Mind blown. Mind blown. So here, the two things that I saw was, I'm testing these bars. It's a rider-owned company. And then he mentioned, you know, hey, there's a guy in Oregon that, 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 that designs motorcycle handlebars, and, and that's who's making them. And I'm like, dude, if this guy's making Harley Davis like like motorcycle handlebars that can take that kind of abuse, they're going to take the, the, any kind of abuse that I can throw at him. And so I ordered the bars without ever riding them, seeing them in person. I was just like, if, if, he's, if Jacob's going to vouch for them, I'm down. So I bought a pair. I got them. And at this point, I won't ride another pair of handlebars. Like, I'm done. Like, end of story. Like, these are going to be the bars I run forever. And I absolutely adore them. And the other thing about Broke Boys, um, to your point, um, the quality that they put into their stuff. Like, I got a t-shirt, and I expected it to be a t-shirt, right? And it, I just thought it'd be like a silkscreen t-shirt. And then I open it up. Yeah, dude, you're going exactly where I was. There's, there's a... Like it's the the t-shirt is like a two ply t-shirt. Um, the silk screen is is <laughs> thicker material. It's not gonna it's not gonna wash off. Um, it's got it's, got it's their tagless logo in the shirt. Yeah, it's tagless. The logo silk screened on the inside, and it's got what he was just showing you. It's got like a tag that's like gold thread on the bottom of my t-shirt. You, hey, you, it, 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 it. Details like that are in the shirt. You look at those bar. Go, go get yourself right now. Get a hold of anybody on Broke Boys. Go to their website. Go to Jacob's website and order a pair of these bars. When you get the bars in hand, and you already know they're tested hard, look at those welds on that raw bar, dude. And if your attention to detail has an eye for you know welds or looking at anything that's quality, check out the weld stacks on those little dimes that go around those welds on a tubular bar meeting another tubular bar and those things are perfectly welded big shout out to to the to the guy that's up there welding in oregon and for broke yeah. boy demanding this type of quality with their parts because we don't find a lot of aftermarket parts for these big 29ers and here comes a rider owned team owned brand who's putting out not just shirts and hoodies but parts that we can use on our bikes if we choose to upgrade and, and accessorize our bikes with 
writer own writer made parts it's badass 100 percent. there's the bars that they just came out with their jacob santos signature bars 32 inches wide eight inches of rise 10 inches of upsweep which it feels like a lot if you're not used to it but it's good for bar spins it's good it's good for everything they feel super comfortable right now being welded is four piece bars <clears throat> going to be the same same spec, same spec out size four piece bars as soon as those things drop there is a sprocket of multiple sizes in the works that's going to be the next piece of product to drop then we're going to drop forks and then a stem. Um, it's all. I forgot that there was even a sprocket. I was just talking with Jacob this morning. He called me, and uh, we we shot the ship for a little while. And uh, you know, that's another guy that man. You just reach out and talk to some people in this thing, and you get this. You know, feedback. You know, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about old school stuff? You can hit up one person. If you want to talk about jumping shit, Santos is your guy. You want to talk about the future of bike life? Santos is your guy. You know, I, I told him, Matt, I go, you know, pretty soon uh, Broke Boys is going to be sponsored by me because there's not one thing that they're coming out with that I don't want to have on my bike. I so. couldn't agree more. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And here's here's the thing. Like uh, the, the Broke Boys is, is more than just a product. It's more than just a it's it's kind of it's like a lifestyle thing. But the thing about it is, is Jacob is so humble about like, you know, I'm nobody. And, and here I am, I go out and I, I do a picture of a lawnmower, an old Flatland trick. And Jacob's like, dude, that's sick. And I'm like, here's this guy that I, am, that, that I look up to commenting on my stuff. You know what I mean? And, and it just blew my mind. And then I, I, I started following everybody, just like you had just mentioned, Craig. Like, I followed everybody on the team. And it's like, everybody has a unique style. And everybody has, has something that, to offer to, 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 to anybody that's writing. And you will find inspiration. You will find someone on that team that you relate to. And Craig, I'm going to kind of ask you. There you go. There's the Santos uh, beanie right there. Craig, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you to just kind of emulate. Like we had a conversation a, a while back, and and your thoughts on Jacob. Um, I think you nailed it perfectly in your description. You know, okay. Uh, the 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 fine print note I'm going to put out here is Jake says that I talk way too much about him in my podcast. So I'm going to fucking like, keep this short and sweet. Like, you so he can't say that I spent 40% of my time <laughs> talking about it. So, so what I said was this, okay? And I, I, I skated back in the day and I rode bikes. So, I, you know, my, my influences from, from the late 80s or mid 80s to the early 90s was the Bones Brigade, the Pal Peralta um, skateboard team that was established or created – um, by Stacy Peralta, who was an old, uh, you know, Dogtown uh, or whatever. I can't remember the team he came from. But Dogtown. Anyway, it was Dogtown, right? <laughs> Jacob's, Jacob's the Stacy Peralta. He's the maestro. He's the orchestrator of this product, this brand, and this lifestyle by creating this team, by creating these products for, for the team and for people who ride bikes. And I just think that, you know, that was a good analogy kind of to piece that together and let people think, you know, know about somebody who's who's an innovator, who's also writing and who's in the scene, immersed in the crowd, but doing things that um, are just elevating and bringing the sport um, or lifestyle or bike life, whatever you want to call it, up to a higher level. And, and Jacob's that guy. So that was my analogy with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say I'll, I'll kind of, you know, I'll, I'll end it on this one. But to me, he's like, he is some. he loves the way that you ride as much as the way you love you ride, the way that you ride. Um, he, he's this bigger than life character. I mean, he, he's got tattoos everywhere and, and he could look intimidating to some people. But he he is more excited about what you're doing than you probably are. That's the feeling that I got. You know what I mean? He's he. Jacob is all about everybody riding and just having fun. That's the way I describe I, it. I think I saw something, and Matt, maybe you know, uh, Jay, someone put up Jacob Santos is your favorite rider's favorite rider. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Matt's, not, uh, Matt's not saying it. 100%. No, that's, the picture of him. that's the picture of him on his bike Very where he had nice. the pink hair. Yeah. Uh, I I got to tell you, uh, you know, seeing you in that jersey, um, the first time I saw that jersey, 
Um, and it just kind of goes back to like, like uh, Craig and I were talking on, on our thing. I'm a Jersey addict. I love jerseys. I don't own a jersey, but I love BMX jerseys. <laughs> the only jersey I, I own is, is my MCS factory jersey because my mom kept it and it's in a box somewhere. You need um, to get a jersey. <laughs> dude, I got I to gotta get a jersey. Tell, tell me about like that jersey. Tell me about your sponsors and, and what it's like being sponsored. If you can, if you can kind of cover that, I, I would love to hear that story. Okay, so the secret to the, you know, I, li I got a lot of TLD, Troy Lee Designs. I wear elbow pads, and it covers them up. That's why I like to wear them, but that's a side note. So, yeah, Team Corrosive is, uh, you know, I like to wear the jerseys, too. I bought a Blockheads jersey. Um, I got a bunch of Troy Lee Designs ones in the summertime. That It makes me feel like I'm young again and I'm out, you know, it makes me feel like I'm dressed appropriate to go out and just kill some shit. Um, so the sponsorship stuff, you know, I'm a sponsored writer with the broke boys team. Um, you know, it, uh, it just fuels my fire on how hard I push myself to ride. And I, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, uh, traditional wheelie guy. I, I got the swerves. I'm more of a flow rider where I, if you want to ride with me and you want to really see what I'm doing, ride with me and follow my lines. Let's ride together and find lines that two people fit through. That's where I'm at. The combos and stuff, it's a discipline that's physically, you know, beyond my limits. I'm not going to risk falling on my goddamn head over and over because these kids that learn this stuff, that, that's really what they do is you fall on your head a whole bunch. But I'm more of a, just a, you know, a flow rider, get out there and, have fun, ride at a fast pace, and put your bike in a place that you know people aren't going to, they're like, dude, you made it through there. I'm like, what? What? It, it was that close. It, yeah, I know. I drove forklift for a few years. I, You know, you you either make it or you don't, you know? And um, that mentality, you know, it translates into my riding style. And, uh, yeah, makes it a lot of fun. So, is Matt, it talk a little bit about your sponsors. Who who, who are you sponsored by? Who's, who's, who's putting... Their name okay, uh, so, you know, I I rode for, shit, I, I ride for the fun of it, and I still do, and I always will. <clears throat> but, I, you know, through all this riding, I met guys like Damon Dayton, Tommy Laughlin from Santa Cruz. I meet all these people that they're key players in, in what I consider the hierarchy of the bike life scene, SE Bikes. They're, um, they're, they're in the know with Todd Lyons, and um, riding with these guys and them telling me, dude, you're the fucking baddest dude out here. And I'm like... I'm six five. I don't like to stick out of the crowd. I don't want to blend in. And yeah, I got these, I got these people telling me, they're in my <laughs> ear saying, "Dude, what the fuck is going on in your head? You're this is insane. You're it's fucking gnarly. You're super rad." And dude, keep showing up, right? Encouraging me, just a simple encouragement. And um, then I get with Scoby, and he teaches me how to post on Instagram and how to target and how frequent and what time of day to post. There's all these little idiosyncrasies that you can manipulate to your advantage. And um, as he had sponsored Kevin, you know, Otterbean, phenomenal on a bike. Um, young yeah. kid, probably not the best at making decisions yet. And um, for whatever reason, he sold the bikes. Luckily, Todd Lyons wanted to keep that slot in Northern California. And I wanted that spot when Kevin got it. You know, I was like, M -m -m but and I'm thinking, you know what? he's deserving of it. I need to support him in it. And, you know, some of this will rub off, right? Some of the success yeah. will rub off. And uh, Kevin still kills it on a bike. He has other aspirations. He's working. He's in the car scene. He's 18, 19 years old. Um, he'll be back whenever he comes out. It don't matter what trick I'm doing. He'll dominate. He's He is the best at it. But, you know, so I just keep riding and plugging away and progressing. I start doing the hopping thing. Now I can hop around on my pedals with no pegs and I can wheelie out. Whereas before, you know, I, I couldn't. And it's all about just riding and progressing and getting better. Um, so Kevin sold the bikes, the slot opened up, they put it up for grabs. It was me, uh, Rich Luan, uh, Lamar from San Francisco and a kid named Kyle from the Bay Area. And they kind of put together a post and it, they put it out there for their following to, you know, kind of digest. Um, the post got like, it got like 900 comments. And oh, man. It, 
I see, I then I, so you have a vision of who you are and what you are. And I don't think I'm better than other people, but I know I'm performing at a high level. I know what effort I'm putting into this and what I'm expecting, you know, to achieve. My goals are very high in all of this. And um, it was just recognition that I'm already, I'm already kind of to where I wanted to be. And now I just need to stay consistent and keep working. And um, Todd was gracious enough to get me on the team. Now I ride for the SE crew. Um, they flow me product. I get to go. I get invited to like movie shoots. Uh, I get invited to Todd Lyons' house for the weekend with all like Chris Fox, Dick Cheeseburger. These are my teammates now. Um, One Way Rye, BS Ball Out are still on the crew. I, Stefan now rides for Collective. Um, there's these team mentalities that help us, you know, help us stay who we are and keep pushing and you know i love being a role model i i love being 44 years old and in the middle of this growing bike life scene you know um not that i'm smarter than these kids but i've seen a lot of stuff and i like you guys get to watch all this stuff develop and uh dude i know we're onto something good here you definitely are absolutely yeah for sure um where, where can I pick up that, that jersey? Just Google Team Corrosive or Corrosive Clothing? Yeah, so that this is another one of the sponsors. Um, Team Corrosive is Michael Wicken from New York City. He's one of Todd's friends. I'm not sure how long he's known Todd, but I know he's known Todd for a long time. They go way back. He's a photographer in New York. He has his own brand. I, I think I paid 60 bucks for this. Um, this one comes with the SE logo. Um, I'm, on, I'm obviously on the team. Uh, this is a team jersey. It has a little bit different stuff on it. But if you go on it, I'm not sure if it'll come with this. It might have yeah. a skull. But go on to Team Corrosive. They, he has a website. He has T-shirts. He's got hats. He's got the jerseys. Um, the jersey fits great. And, you know, in the summertime, it keeps the sun off your arms. It's vented, so it keeps you cool. Um, I like to wear it in the summertime because you feel the breeze blowing through it. Um, it makes me feel like when I wear this out in public, people are like, did you just come from the track? They see my bike on the car and they see the Jersey and they're like, are you on the track? Are you down? Do you know this guy? And I'm like, no, actually I ride the street and they, you know, they look at me like <laughs> they don't get it. But, uh, you know, a lot of the people I tell them, I tell them RL Matt Rickard, you know, it's, it's on the back of the shirt. You know, I tell them, you know, yeah. Hey. Just go on there and check it out, dude. It's not like I'm into some serious, you know, like you got to follow me or anything. But go into it and look at what we're doing. And yeah. um, some of those people are the ones that pan out to be long-term riders because they they go home and they think about it and they realize. Here's here's my thought on what they realize. They realize I got all this time on my hands, right? It, as we get older in life, we get set in our ways, and we try to free up as much time as we can. And when we get those couple of hours of time, we're like, what are we gonna do? You right. go out and you buy a bike. You yep. spend that. We're going to call it a thousand dollars. You spend a thousand dollars. You build the bike you want, and that's it. Your money's spent. You don't have to keep. You know, you could spend six hundred and then build up to it, but the money's spent one time, and then you can keep going back to that fountain of youth. I wrote this down. It goes back to that feeling when you were riding before you were twelve years old, thirteen years old. What happens in our minds is, is responsibility and puberty happens somewhere around that age and our lives change where our sense of freedom gets manipulated into responsibilities and other things so if in our mind we can go back to when all you had to worry about was to stay far enough you know you had to stay close enough to home to hear your mother's voice and that was it you know and that's what riding bikes does for me it takes me back to that okay i, I ate all my food i did all my chores all my responsibilities my bills are today it's bills are paid and i went to work now i can go out and enjoy my bike ride with my friends and uh, it it's funny how it's that childhood system that we establish when we're real young that we can go back and revisit. And, uh, you know, we can share it with everybody. It's not like like racing. It's real competitive. You got to – this guy's the fastest. And you, you, know, you can go ahead and try to beat him. It's not like that out here. It's like, dude, fucking Craig's here. Isaac's here. Dude, it's good. You know, it, there's no uh, – the more people that you know and are familiar with, the, the more fun it feels for the individual. Where where do you see this the bike life movement going? We know where it's at right now. We kind of see little sprinkles of, of things to come, but 
in your opinion, Matt, just to close out for me, where, where do you see the, the bike life scene going to from where it is now? So I bought the big BMX three years ago. We're going to call it almost three years. And I've kind of, you know, I dove into this thing headlong just because I, I had the time and I felt like this was something valuable to invest my time and efforts into. And I still had a, my skill set was still intact where I'm like, you know what? I'm, I want to stay in the front of this thing. I want to be out there with the D blocks and the Lottie Dotties. Lottie Dottie's my favorite writer, by the way, huge shout out to Lottie Dottie. If yes. I could write one person, it's him, but there's key players like D blocks, you know, they got the goon squad. You got all these people that are, keeping this thing going d block it's crazy dude he's been doing this for five years and he hasn't slowed down but now you got these other bike companies you got thrown i ride for se bikes through and through you know i bleed se blue and brown i don't it, it is who i am and what i want to spend my life invest my time in but thrown they're valid they got riders they got bikes <clears throat> they're helping enrich this thing they're adding a level of quality that se can't provide because their bikes are in lockdown basically so this thing's going to still grow. The other bike companies, GT and Redline, they're they're getting in there. Uh, Broke Boys BMX might have a frame soon, you know. Um, but I see kids that are 9 and 10 years old, they're going to be riding for the next five years. There's a lot of those kids that are out with their parents. And um, yeah. we're still seeing new kids show up. You know, we got this JP916, Got Blocks JP916. There's 916 Evan. These two kids, I got my eyes on them, you guys. I'm not... I, I see in these kids greatness. Period. Dude, I, I'm seeing I'm seeing kids like that are really, you know they're wheelie technicians, combo footwork masters, or you know like so into that. I see them. They're starting to ask me, or a few of them are. Hey man, um, what about some of these old school tricks? How do I learn those? Where do I find them? What? And I'm seeing them starting to incorporate that into their skill set to where it's like, dude. This is going to be a wheelie combo mob scene, but it's also these kids are wanting to add on to it. And I think for me, that's where I see some of these guys going. And I think it, you know, I hope it catches on where they're like throwing in old school tricks, mid school style, whatever, on top of what they're doing right now. Like the evolution of freestyle started out when I was around and Isaac could probably attest or have some comment on it where it was like, it started out as one thing um, and then evolved and it, it gained its own, you know, uh, momentum and energy to where it was, you know, totally different movement um, throughout time. And I think that's going to happen with this with this bike life movement, like the structured, um, not structured, but the, the way that the tricks are learned, what they what they start adding into their repertoire. Absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. I think. You know, as an old Flatland guy, watching it go from, you know, okay, here's here's RL and Mike Buff and Wilkerson just doing like, okay, they, it was, you were an all around rider. You did, you did like, you know, endos, but you also rode ramp. And then you kind of saw it split off into Flatland and ramp. And it, it looks like bike life to me, just watching it, it went from just riding bikes and riding wheelies to, you know, I'm over here and I'm just going to ride wheelies and, and more of a flow rider like yourself and do jumps and wall rides because that's what I like to do on a bike. But then, you know, you've also got kids, you know, forking off and, and they're becoming combo riders. And, you know, it's it's it, the, the beauty of this bike life thing is that you can do whatever you want to do on a bike. No one's defining. There's no definition of this is fun. So if you like to do, you know, if you like to do combos, man, I'm going to cheer you on, even though I, it, I'm with you, Matt. Like, I can't fall down and, and be out of work for a while. And so for me, it's it's hard. They go, they go crazy, and, and I love every aspect of that, even though I'm not riding that style, because I see myself in these kids, the way they're setting up their bikes. Like, you, you know, I, with them. Yeah, yeah. Do, do exactly. More, they want to do more. They're like, okay, what can I do now? Because yep. it's, it's, it's not so much like I'm trying to, you know, it, 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 it's not a one-up thing, you know, but it is. It's like... It's a progression. It's a progression. It's a progression. You have to start one level and say... Okay, my swerves suck. I'm tired of even putting in the effort. I want to start doing combos, and right. or or they want to jump or they want to learn flatland. There's so many aspects that 
you don't have to be good at one thing or another. The wheelies and the swerving, that's all an East Coast thing. This West Coast, we're more on the extreme sports side where it's the spins and the, the, yeah. the flat-out air, um, the grinds and stuff. And, and skateboarding is a big background. And it's, you know, that I follow Thrasher Mag on Instagram. I would recommend if anybody wants to know what an edit's, a perfect edit looks like, Every single one that they put out is dialed in completely. They highlight the writers. They, they, it's like there's too much inside of one of their posts. And Thrasher Magazine, every time I'll watch the whole thing. And it's skateboarding. And it's watching each writer achieve stuff to their own abilities and within their skill set. And then when they exceed it, Tate Ross Kelly, Jesus Christ, this guy, he, he, he's the one that can pop his front tire off, bounce it off the wall, and then get, land it back on the forks. Same, um, yes. <laughs> don't know what you're capable of you know like my bio on instagram says never under and never underestimate the power within yourself push yourself to new heights and then when we go on these ride outs you have other people that said you know you're like fuck i can't hold it no more and you drop it and the guy's like dude if your feet went around one more time you were there and you're like what oh, oh okay uh, run it back and you do well, it and, and, you, and like you said you know it's it's like we're a culture you know, but we're also a different scene based on where you're at geographically. And the West, like West Coast, dude, I'm seeing guys that, you know, we're riding the 29s, even in Stockton on some of our stops. We're going to a skate park. We're riding bulls. We're riding dirt tracks, pump tracks. I mean, we have a more, I believe, a more variable or different scene here than the East Coast. You know, East Coast, they're urban um on the urban concrete, you know, they're riding through metropolitan areas and we're doing the same, but we're also throwing in a lot of the things that Matt said where we're, you know, we're taking it to different levels. And I love seeing these, you want to call them wheelie kids, but let me tell you this, they're hitting box jumps, jumping anything they can get big airs, you know, trying to put a different twist on this. And it's we'll make a big deal. Badass. It's no badass. That stuff, you, everybody, this kid just jumped that. All right, run it back. And boom, watch him jump it. And watch, you know, that's that's the key ingredient to this bike life thing. As long as we can positively influence each other and add quality to each other's lives through this process, this thing will continue. Um, you know, like I said, I'm a recovering meth addict. I have a recovery background. And I spent a lot of time in the fellowship. And I see a lot of similar patterns here where you have people that don't know how to fucking stay sober. You have people that do. And they teach each other. And the people that do stay sober long term, they still go to the meetings because they learn. They remember what it's like being young and fresh. So there's this trade off of the young people coming. They don't know shit. They look to the olders for direction. The older people are, you know, they're bored or whatever. So they look to the uh, youth yeah. to keep fresh. And it's this trade off. And I'm seeing it more and more and more get ingrained into this society this bike life society and and for me i know because seeing it be successful in recovery it, it, it's working and people come and go and you got short time 30 60 90s we call them in recovery where people just don't stick around very long and um but you know damon he gets 100 riders in stockton no one even really knows where stockton is and he's getting 100 riders every week and so it, it's, it's, you know, I think it's <laughs> dude, yep. I can tell you, like when I was a kid right now in Stockton, it was, there was just like, there was, I think there was like four, maybe four people that rode, um, freestyle. And there was like one race kid that had a, a mini truck and that was it. Like there wasn't a whole lot of riders. Like I, I absolutely, I don't know him really well at all. Um, but I absolutely adore Damon and what he's doing. Like one of my, one of my bucket list things is to take a selfie next to his bus, they go to uh, because they take that to happen to every year. That's oh man, to. it's that's just down the road. Yeah, I mean, I just that, 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 that anyway, guy. They got married I, there, and they take the they had it down there this year. Man, I I adore what he is doing because um, just be, maybe it's maybe it's my love for 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 that area, Central California, and and, Mayor and growing Dave up there. The dude, of I, SC White, dude, I dude, I I absolutely. Um, I mean, grateful is not even the right word because. I, I can only imagine what it would have been like for me growing up there um, had had I, I known him or, or what he's accomplished now was happening back then. Because, I mean, just it's just amazing. I'm blown away by that guy. I'm probably talking way too much about him, but 
um, absolutely adore what he's doing and, and, and um, what he's done for Stockton and Northern California and those riders. Um, it's amazing. So. Huge shout out. We wouldn't be here talking if it wasn't for the Urban Misfit podcast. Go yes. check it out on YouTube. It's all about getting the youth on bikes, getting the old people on bikes. It's, we're talking about each person and their individual experience on bikes. And we're trying to shed more light through the YouTube channel, just like we're doing here. Um, Urban Misfit Podcast, Slim Boy 916. He's doing a phenomenal job over there. He's yeah. shedding light on stuff that needs light shed on it. So Urban yes. Misfit Podcast. Um, Huge shout out to Slim Boy 916. Tucker is, is bringing this to the forefront for everybody to keep their eyes on. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I, I can tell you like the way, you know, I always say this, like, if you're gonna if you're gonna watch my video, stop, stop my video, go to Urban Misfits podcast, subscribe, watch a couple of those because yeah. what Tucker's doing, Tucker for me for me growing up it was the magazines. We've kind of talked about it here, the magazines, Wizard Publications, BMX Action, Freestyle Magazine. That's where I went for inspiration. That's where I went to to learn about riders. That's where I learned about the scene, and what I see Tucker and and um, Urban Misfits podcast. That has replaced that that central location for us now. So if yes. you want to learn it, you want to stay up up to date. I don't know where that guy gets all the time because it seems like every time I open YouTube, there's a new premiere. Like there's you know there's a, there's a premiere. What tomorrow I believe there's a premiere, or maybe it's even tonight. Uh, um, I just saw it. Yeah, Monday. He's, Monday. Tucker, Tucker spends all of his extra time doing podcast stuff. It isn't like yeah. he. He's a business owner and he maintains a few businesses during the day and it probably doesn't take eight hours a day. But when he's at home, he is fully engulfed on what his next move is, what he wants out of the podcast. I'm just gracious to be able to be a part of it. Um, he's brought me in kind of as a co-host, guest voice. He runs everything and I just, you know, I do as much as he lets me within the boundaries of his own visions. And, um, you know, it's it's a blessing to be able to be a part of it. Um, yeah. Like, like you said, it's just that this thing is multifaceted, and the more we can shed light on each facet, the more the more meaningful this whole thing is going to be. Well, and, well, said, you're you're going to find the, the, the beauty of it, too, is is that it's not just a, a NorCal thing. It's not just a West Coast thing. Like I've seen I've seen Steezy from Florida, I believe, was on there. Um, you know, he's got he's got people from all over the country on this this thing. And so it's it's a gift to the bike life community, um, and it's a labor of love. You can tell he pours a lot of his heart and soul into it. I mean, he's in there. I, I listened to it this week, and he's just talking about, like, I got this new camera and, and how excited he is about getting, like, new stuff to make the podcast better. And, dude, I cannot tell you how graceful or, or gracious I am um, or grateful I am of, of what he's doing. So absolutely. Um, Follow Urban Misfit Podcast. You can find it on Apple iTunes. You can find it on YouTube. This thing is probably one of the, my favorite things to do when I'm not riding a bike is listen to yeah, it. And, and start, start with episode 14 if you want to. If you want to <laughs> start with the old school and work your way up to the new. <laughs> hey, at some point, Craig's like, he's in the middle of his interview and he realizes, maybe I don't even belong here. How did I... And we talk about it and we talk about how the people it's from getting support of people that we reached out to at the rides. You know, he got JD 209 is give him an honorable mention because he reaches out and he sucks people into this stuff. And that's how Craig, you know, it, it his name, you know, enough people say your name in this scene, you become famous literally. And uh, that's, we want to use our network to make hey, sure. I want to give a shout out to JD because my first, um, the first person I met on a ride out was JD. He is, he's a cool ass dude. And it's the type of people he is. He is like what everyone I would hope for to be like on these ride outs, right? He's friendly, approached me and then just instantly felt connected to the scene. So shout out to you, JD. And uh, yeah, Matt, keep going with that. Cause it's definitely a, a, a point to be made. Absolutely. Matt, thanks again. Thank you for being so honest and so real with us today. Thanks for sharing your story. 
Um, that was probably, you know, it takes a lot to get me to be speechless. And I was, it was just humbling to hear like your story, what you've overcome. I relate so much to, you know, the, the dad, the dad, uh, you know, moments and just hearing, hearing you be so open and honest, man. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all that you've achieved. And I Thanks, look forward man. to just seeing, seeing what, what happens, uh, you know, in the rest of this year and, and on to the future. Um, and thanks for making time to, to come and hang out with Craig and I. And, and Craig, thank you, man. Um, your gift as well to the BMX community. As an 80s kid, um, I love everything you do, man. Even All guys are like, all good. Dude, yes. <laughs> even like yesterday, like on your Instagram story, there's the Evil Knievel, uh, the Evil Knievel bike um, toy, the little rip rip cord thing. And I was like, dude, I had that. I had I put that. that up. I put that up because of your and I <laughs> station, so cool. Yeah. So, it made that noise. So, yeah, it did, dude. And it, boom, wheelie. And it, I, we, I only had one. I had, like, when we, we were growing up, man, it was vinyl. It was vinyl everything. Uh, everything was shag carpet in, in the 80s, but, like, your kitchen was vinyl. And so I'd be in there ripping that thing when my mom's trying to cook, and she'd be over there just yelling at me. Oh, man, the thing, I can tell you. But uh, on it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for tuning in today to our little our little chit chat. I hope you had a great time. I hope you had as much fun watching this as as we all had chit chatting. Um, we'll be back again with more of these because because right now we're encouraging too everybody much fun not to keep doing. Yeah. And right now, I mean, stay home, stay home, ride, ride by yourself, social distance. This is going to be over soon. But in the meantime, um, you know, check out the, the his podcast. Check out Urban Misfits podcast. Follow Craig on Instagram, and you're going to see some amazing wrecks. You're going to see amazing toys. You're going to see amazing advertisements. It's just a walk down memory lane. So thank you both for joining me today. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. See you later. Later, everybody.